Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Survival where I have just returned from a two and a half hour AFK session. What was I AFKing for you may ask? Well, copper, specifically oxidized copper. So I don't actually need any of this for the builds that we're going to be doing in today's episode, but I had to go somewhere for a couple of hours and I thought I may as well make use of my time and oxidize some copper. So we have got this stored away for when we need it on a rainy day, but that day is not today. What we are going to be doing today is continuing our project that we started in the last episode, which is this mining operation. In the last video, in case you missed it, we built our ore sorting building that has a crane with a conveyor belt attached to it, and we also did some stuff actually in the hole itself, such as these minecart rails, and if we're lucky, there it is. We can see the minecart going across. So the idea of this building is that all of the ores we can get from the big old cave down below get sorted into separate groups. We're going to have four different groups. One is for coal, two is for iron, gold and copper, another one is for redstone and lapis, and the fourth and final one is for emeralds and diamonds. So the idea is to send those ores off to their separate buildings to then be refined somehow. Now in the last episode I asked you guys how we could refine them, what we should do with all of the individual buildings and how we can make them unique from each other. Unfortunately I haven't been able to see your comments just yet because well the episode is not currently live at the time of recording. Unfortunately, I'm having to start this episode a little bit earlier than anticipated. I'm going to be quite busy in a few days, so I just need to do a slight bit of pre-recording for my videos this week. And the first thing I always record in a given week with my schedule is the survival episode, just so I can make sure I get it done on time for you guys. Now, that of course does mean I haven't been able to see your ideas on what you think we should do with all of these ores. Which is a shame because I'm sure they are wonderful, so thank you for the ideas, even though I haven't seen them just yet. <laughs> but that does mean the builds that we're going to be doing today, which is actually going to be the redstone and lapis building, as well as the coal building, it's just what I've thought up by myself. However, the beautiful thing about this game is nothing is permanent. No build is ever set in stone, which means once I read through your comments, I can always make some changes to the builds that we're going to be doing today. Which, as I mentioned, is going to be the coal building and the redstone and lapis buildings. And I'm just stood up here trying to pick out a spot for them. The redstone and lapis building is kind of going to be built on a diagonal, sort of. So I thought this shape of the land is actually really well suited to the look of the building. So I think that one can go there. And we do have quite a lot of flat land here. But I'm thinking the coal building, maybe we stick it on top of the hill up there. I'm pretty sure I have most of the supplies I'm going to need for the builds that we do today. However, there are a couple that I'm missing. So real quickly, before we get started with any building, I need to do a tiny bit of resource gathering. Oh boy, that was... Quite the grind. Many, many seconds were spent gathering all of those resources. So it turns out I pretty much only needed acacia. And yes, I did harvest more than one tree. <laughs> uh, I didn't need like a stack or so. Everything else I actually had on hand ready to go. So now I can fly back to my base here and put these acacia blocks with the other ones in my shulker boxes here where I've got all of my supplies stored up and ready to go. Do I have a little bit more? Yes, I do. I even have 48 more in there. Probably didn't even need to cut any trees down. <laughs> but I got my two boxes here which I'm going to take over to the build site and we can get started on building the coal building. Name pending. I have no idea what to call all of these buildings.
So here is our coal building, at least as far as the exterior is concerned. We're going to get started on the interior very shortly, but I do just want to highlight the block palettes here. So as you can see, these are different block palettes. I don't think there's actually much crossover at all between the blocks I've used, but they're kind of similar. So with this area, that's sort of what I'm trying to do. I don't want to have just a handful of blocks that I'm able to use, four or five. I want to go a bit more expansive than that. But I don't want to do something like I have for my base here where I've basically used every single block in the game. I want to limit myself a little bit but not too much. And I'm doing that so that the buildings over here look as though they belong together but not so much so that they're just a copy of each other as though they were part of a village or a city where you would be using the same sort of blocks. I want to find a good middle ground is basically what I'm saying. But anyway, let's get back focused on our coal building over here. So as I said, the interior is yet to be finished and I thought maybe I would try and walk you through my process with what I'm gonna do with the interior here because it is gonna be kind of important to all of the buildings in this location. They need to provide some sort of functionality and actually be doing something with the ore that's provided to them. So this one, as we know, is our coal building. All I'm really trying to do here with the coal building is break it away from its ore. So pretty much turning this into this. And how we're going to do that, you may ask? Well, I had the idea of using stone cutters. I I'm not quite sure why I got this one out as an example when <laughs> there's literally a stone cutter right here. I guess it actually works because we're going to be having a line or a set of stone cutters all in one certain area. So the idea is pretty simple. At the back of the building, around about here, we're going to have a set of stone cutters all grouped together, something a little bit like this, probably put down into the floor. And then we're going to bring the coal that is going to be stacked up on the outside here, just underneath this awning, over to the stone cutters. And in theory, you would chuck them in here and they kind of bounce around and all of the stone would get broken off and put elsewhere I haven't thought too much about that but then you would just be left with the coal you could turn the machine off and collect it somehow a little bit like those videos you see online of the industrial shredders if you don't know what I'm on about they're basically big machines and you can chuck virtually anything into it and it will be destroyed <laughs> might take a while but it will get there so that was kind of the idea obviously we're not shredding the coal we're breaking it down and and destroying the stone but that was the inspiration for this idea as for transporting the coal over to the stone cutters here, I thought we could use some sort of conveyor belt. So as I mentioned, we're going to have a stack of coal blocks here that you could maybe just push onto the conveyor belt. They get taken over here and destroyed. A, a little bit like the system we have here for our crane with the conveyor belt going into the item sorter or ore sorter building. But before we get started on any of that, I'm going to get rid of the stone cutter pit for right now and I'm just going to neaten out the walls and the ceiling and make it all look a little bit cleaner in here. The roof at the moment is a bit too coppery, and yes, that's a new word. <laughs> I'm trying to get it to this level. I think that's the weathered copper, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's the exposed. I'm always getting it wrong. I want it to that level, which is only the second tier of copper oxidization. So it shouldn't take too long, and I don't really want to waste the copper I oxidize at the start of the episode on this roof because I'm not going to see it all the time, and it shouldn't take too long to spread its way across. And when it's done, I'll give it a good wax. So now we can get started on the fun part, which is going to be the conveyor belt taking the coal to the stone cutters. Of course, I need to do the floor as well. I'm thinking I might do a similar floor as to what we have in the, where is it? Here it is, <laughs> the iron blacksmith. I've gone with a, if we just step inside, a tough and coral block combination. I really, really like how this looks, so I will happily use it again. However, I don't think I have enough of the coral block, so a trip to the coral reef may be needed. Let's see, how much coral do I have? 16 and 18. That might be enough, it's cutting it a bit close. <laughs> we can always take a trip over to the coral reef if needed, but hopefully that should cover most of the floor. We can do a large majority of it with the tough blocks. Something I do actually need for the conveyor belt system are some warped trap doors, which I currently have maybe two or three of in one of these chocolate boxes. Yeah, three warped trap doors and two warp stems. So 
a trip to the nether and possibly a trip to the nether reef. No, coral reef <laughs> is possibly needed. We'll just head to the nether first of all. We have made it to the world's smallest warped forest, as you can see, floating carefully on that island behind me. Oh, there's the rest of it. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering, don't really want to get those trees. They're a little bit too precarious. I must say, harvesting warped wood instead of crimson wood is a much more relaxing process. There is basically nothing here that can really kill me. There was an enderman, but that might be it. And I nearly looked him dead in the eyes. <laughs> yeah, we're friends, right? We're cool. Yeah, we're cool. I should really get myself a hoe. I still don't have one and I'm not quite sure why. I think it's because if I'm going to get one, it may as well be a netherite fully enchanted hoe. <laughs> and that takes a little bit of time to get together. But it's really annoying with these trees because obviously if I do need to break any of these blocks, it takes ages. But it's okay because my axe can fly through the wood here. And after a little bit of chopping, we have managed to get nearly three stacks of warp stems, which will be more than enough for today. Now presenting the coal veyor belt. It just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Much like the coal is rolling off the conveyor belt, the coal veyor belt into the stone cutter pit. Don't fall in or it's very sharp. Ouch, 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 very painful. So don't do that. <laughs> so the idea here is, as I mentioned, the coal is getting pushed onto the conveyor belt and it's ending up going into the stone cutter pit. Now, I would like this whole area I guess with the mining operation to be quite primitive I don't want anything to be super high tech so that's why you're having to push the coal in by hand and then we're actually going to link up some sort of way that you could in theory move the conveyor belt and activate the stone cutters by hand too. So on the exterior of the build, I've added in these stone cutters and chains round this side as well as round the back too. And until I started work on the interior, I really had no idea why these were here. I kind of just added them in because they look cool, <laughs> which I think they really do. I, I think they look awesome. But I thought we could add some sort of functionality to these. So what we're going to do is a similar thing onto the in on the inside here. So if I show you what we're going to do at the back, we're going to have a grindstone at the bottom, one connected to the ceiling at the top, and then we're just going to have a line of chains going all the way down, connecting them together. And then we're going to have another two on either side. Just like that. So we end up with something that looks like this. Very similar to what we have on the outside. And my thinking is, with these chains, it's going to be a bit of a pulley system. So maybe this one at the back can be to get the stone cutters moving. You would just have to keep yanking on this chain. And over and over again, it would make the stone cutters rotate. I don't know. <laughs> just a little idea. And then we're going to do a similar thing around this side too. Because of course, on the back of this door is when we have some more grindstones. And maybe these two over here can be to control the conveyor belt. So you'd have to keep pulling on this over and over again, making the conveyor belt move. Maybe they can all be for that. I, I'm, I don't know if this thing at the back here makes sense with the stone cutters. So let's just say they're all to make the conveyor belt move. We could have five different workers in here, kind of pulling them at all once to get some real speed going. I like the manual labor aspect to it. Plus, as it does with the outside, it looks pretty cool. So this obviously takes up most of the room on the interior here, so there isn't really too much left to add in. But I would like to fill in the rest of the open space we have. I think we need to put something here and something over here. In fact, I know we do. <laughs> most of you probably know by now, I planned these builds before in a creative world. I'm thinking for this section, since we have the chimney up there, we could add in some sort of coal testing area. So maybe if we just connect up a furnace at the bottom to the chimney and that should fill in the space nicely. Ah, perfect. Would you look at that? Exactly what I had in mind. So we can put the coal into the holes here. It would go into the furnace. And if we need to test the quality, we could just pump it in here and make sure it's smelting up all of the items well. And maybe over here for this section, we could keep with the theme of testing the coal. So maybe if we just make a little bit of a table set up with a pickaxe next to it and you could kind of chip away at the coal and make sure everything is up to snuff. Oh, once again, exactly what I was thinking of. So as you can see here, I just did some stuff. I mean, uh, the magic did some stuff with the armor stands. You can put them on tool racks here with the tripwire hooks. It's, it's really cool. I love that little feature. And we just got some coal on the table here with another pickaxe next to it just to kind of chip away and, and test the quality, that sort of thing. The very final thing to do before we are done with this build is to place in a couple of lanterns so we don't get anything bad spawning inside of here. 
And just like that, we are done with the coal building. How very neat. Something that's not neat is this block is still the only copper block to change. I don't know how, <laughs> because that happened basically as soon as I placed it down. I'm not too sure how none of the other blocks in the ceiling here have changed in the slightest. But as I said earlier, it's fine. I'll keep an eye on it and wax it when it's done. But now we're able to move on to the next building, which as I mentioned at the start of the video, is going to be for the lapis and the redstone. And since the episode is getting on a little bit time-wise, I'm just going to go ahead and get this build all done, and afterwards I'll show you around and give you the grand tour. So here is our finished redstone and lapis building, which as you can see is split nicely into two sides. The left side is the blue and the right side is the red. Which are you going to pick? I'm going to go for both because, well, they're the same building. <laughs> they're not actually split into half too much. We do have a divider in the middle, as you can see over there with that copper. We're going to check out the interior in a second, but before we do that, I thought I'd just talk about the outside for a bit because in that very quick time lapse, for a start, you couldn't really see around the back. It's nothing special, but I did just want to showcase it anyway. Now I do really like this building, I'm just not sure how well it fits with the other two we've made and this whole area here. And I think the sole reason as to why that possibly is comes down to two different parts of this building. It's nothing to do with the shape or anything like that, but one of them is the colored glass. Obviously, I've got that in place because redstone and lapis, blue and red, you get the idea. I just don't know whether it comes off quite right, so I might actually end up getting rid of that. I'll see what you guys say. But the other thing is the bone blocks here, right in the center. I like how they look, I think it looks great. However, for this area, it feels a bit too sterile. And what I mean by that is because it's such a bright block, like the bone blocks are, and it has such a clean texture, it just doesn't really fit in with everything else. All of the other blocks we've used around here, they're quite busy. <laughs> this is awfully plain and bright, as I said. You know, we got some white blocks over there with the calcite diorite and uh, polished diorite, but they're all quite textured, so I think it works. This. It's just a little bit too clean, so as with the glass, I'll see what you guys say and potentially switch it out next episode. But that's all I really wanted to mention for the exterior of the build, so let's actually head inside and I can show you what's going on a little bit on the interior. So as you can probably tell, these two sides are mirrored, with the exception of the colored glass. That's really the only thing that's different. So I'll just show you one of them, and uh, you can envision what it looks like on the other side, because it's the same, <laughs> but red. Uh, so what I thought we could do with the lapis and the redstone is compress it down and refine it into a liquid. So that's the idea for this. And it's kind of got multiple steps. The first one is like we have with the uh, coal crusher conveyor belt thing over there. We're, we're kind of getting rid of all of the stone and just refining it down to its actual ore. So I'm imagining you would have to be a bit more precise with the lapis and redstone. So let's say... I don't have a block. Can I borrow this one? Thank you. We would get our lapis ore and we'd stick it in the middle there. You know, use the levers maybe to... Uh, clamp it together almost and you could kind of spin it around the stone cutter here and carefully carve it and when you've got just your ore you can then turn around and put it into this system and what we have here are a bunch of liquefiers so you would get your lapis ore and you would pop it in the hole here and something would happen on the inside inside that would turn it into a liquid it would then go through this piping system up to this little contraption up here and as you can see as marked by this uh, liquid drop, not a blue glass pane, no, that, that's a drop of lapis liquid. It falls down into this vat that we have here, and I've used the layered glass trick, so it looks like it's kind of going on forever. Really, it only goes down about 20 blocks deep, and we've just got a layer of glass with an air block in between them, and it creates a really cool effect where you can't really see the bottom unless you're really, really focusing. 
So if you need to get the liquid out and do whatever you would with liquefied lapis and redstone, I have no idea what that would be, but to get it out of the vat, you would just use these taps here that we have on the full blocks. I think I got two around the back too. Yeah, I do. So as I said, that is then copied around over to this side. It's exactly the same with the exception of the blue being red. So we have a nice red liquid stored into here, which looks very, very ominous. Uh, really quite a cool effect, isn't it? But I know redstone is is a dust, right? But I'm trying to think of these ores in a bit of a different way. So when you actually have the redstone ore, there's nothing that really says I'm a dust, <laughs> you know? Like it's not obvious. If you knew nothing about Minecraft, you wouldn't be like, oh yeah, if you break that down, you're gonna have a dust and it, it's used for, uh, for science. No, you could really do anything you wanted with that. I do have an upstairs area for this building, mainly because that's kind of how the structure worked from the outside and I had this space up here and they needed to do something with it, so I just kind of neatened out the walls and everything. Uh, we got some blue and red up here as well, kind of keeping with that theme. It's not too bad with the terracotta up here actually, it's much more subtle than the glass downstairs. I'll probably keep this, but it's just a storage loft. And the very final thing I want to mention with this building is I'm actually using a pretty cool block in the ceiling here. Any guesses on what this is? You may be able to tell, it, it's kind of obvious. Uh, these are stone cutters. <laughs> of course, with how they're positioned with that slab there, you can see the blade and you just get a bit of a cool texture that you don't really see that often in Minecraft. So there's a little trick for you guys if you want to use a bit of a different block in your ceiling. So there we go guys, that is where we're going to have to say goodbye for today's episode. I'm just chilling up here with my farmer buddy who I think maybe next episode we could give him a proper home. He's kind of a bit of an eyesore <laughs> on our location here so we do need to move him at some point in time. Maybe we can do that in the next episode but before we go here super quickly I do just want to mention the episode from last week has not long gone out at the time I'm recording right now. So I've managed to read a couple of your guys' comments and something I noticed quite a few of you saying is in my statistics here, I have actually mined diamond blocks. Regular ones, not just deep slate. I missed it right at the end. I've mined two of them. They should be somewhere around here. Hopefully I don't miss it again, otherwise that'd be really embarrassing. There it is. Really embarrassing. So I have mined two diamond ore. It's possible to get them <laughs> in Minecraft. They don't, it, they don't not exist anymore. So if we wanted to get some for our ore sorting building down there, we can. It's just going to take a little while. But yeah, thank you ever so much for watching this episode, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.